Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing the best luxury niche fragrances for summer 2022. I always do my best to incorporate as many new fragrances as possible so it's not too repetitive. I did bring back a couple fragrances from my 2021 list simply because they are all-time favorites. Summer is really their time to shine and it is my duty to make sure that everybody knows about them. I do have a more affordable list on the way. I know I always say that but I often struggle to put together enough fragrances that I feel strongly enough about that I can recommend them with 100% confidence, but right now I think I have about eight fragrances, so I'm hoping to add just a few more, but that video will be coming soon. I'm going to begin with a new discovery. I don't think this is a new fragrance, but it's certainly new to me and it's new to my collection. If you watched my London vlog or if you followed any of my Florist London content, you've probably heard me talking about this fragrance. It's Sirena Eau de Parfum. And half of the reason I've been so excited to film today's video is simply to introduce you to this fragrance because it was love at first sniff. I was completely blown away and this was a crowd favorite so I know it's not just my nose. When I was in London and I had the chance to visit the boutique and sniff around, I was trying all of the new fragrances, anything that looked or sounded like it would be up my alley. And just about everyone on the trip said that Sirena was their favorite. The favorites were a toss up between Sirena, Mulberry Fig, which is also on this list, and the new Platinum 22 which is celebrating the Platinum Jubilee because it's just an incredibly special fragrance. I do think it's a bit bolder, more powerful, something that I will probably lean into more for fall winter because it's just a deeper fragrance and it's already the hot summer season here in Miami. So I prefer something like Sirena. It's a little bit lighter, fresh. This to me is a mermaid fragrance and I think it's exactly what you want from an aquatic, oceanic, beachy style perfume. This is it. I feel like this is the fragrance that I have been searching for in that category. It's very feminine, it's soft, it's a little bit light. It doesn't disappear. In fact, I've worn this for the last few days consecutively. I can still smell it on my skin five, six hours later, but it's not going to give you a ton of projection. So if you're somebody who wants to knock somebody's socks off with your fragrance, you might be a little bit disappointed by this. On the other hand, if you like something a little bit lighter for daytime in the hot months during summer, then this could be your perfect fragrance. This is like signature scent worthy. It is truly like perfection. Sirena is described as a sparkling floral marine feminine fragrance with the freshness of a sea breeze. Keynotes include jasmine, bergamot, pink peppercorn, oleander, peony, rose, summer berries, musk, patchouli, and sandalwood. I think part of what makes Sirena smell so special is that it is truly the ideal aquatic oceanic fragrance. It smells like the type of perfume that I have been searching for but could never find because so many fragrances in this category smell extremely citrusy or it's maybe a little bit too eau de cologne, a little bit too unisex, whereas Sirena is truly a mermaid fragrance. It is very feminine and it's fresh and clean. It just kind of smacks you in the face right away like a tidal wave. It just smells like ocean air or like a sea breeze. But then right away you get the sweetness from the berries and then this very calming, relaxing sandalwood. What really sets Sirena apart from other fragrances like Ocean de Joa from Giorgio Armani, which is another kind of aquatic leaning fragrance that I love for summer is that Yes, you get summer berries and it's a little bit fruity, but it's not too fruity. It's not a bouquet of flowers. It's not too sickeningly sweet. It just smells very natural, beautiful, and balanced. It smells incredibly elegant and sophisticated like a yacht fragrance, the type of fragrance that you would spray if you were sailing for the day or going somewhere maybe a little bit exotic a special vacation. And uh, although it is very sophisticated, I think it's a casual fragrance that can be worn every single day. So it's very versatile. I think if you were maybe a beach bride, this would be a great pick. If you have some sort of special meeting, special event that's near the ocean, this would be perfect, right on theme. But also if you're just kind of running errands, if you're just going out and about for the day, this would be a really nice fragrance to wear cannot get over this fragrance because it truly does feel like 
a fragrance that I've always knew I wanted in my collection, but I didn't know it existed. Now this is the perfume that started it all, that started my love affair with Florist London, my first introduction. This was sent to me complimentary earlier in the year whenever it first launched, Mulberry Fig. This was another crowd favorite, and I knew from the moment I smelled this fragrance, it would be perfect for summertime because it reminds me a lot of some of the really fancy luxury boutique hotels down on South Beach. That is what comes to mind whenever I smell this fragrance. Oh, it is so nice. This is a little bit more of a tropical oceanic vibe. Kind of similar family, I would say, to Sirena, but still very different. This is a little bit more creamy coconut, which I personally love coconut. It's a very sophisticated, natural, not artificial coconut. So I just think of like an all-white outfit, maybe like an all-white jumpsuit or blazer skirt set. Something incredibly fabulous and chic. That's the outfit that comes to mind whenever I smell Mulberry Fig. I believe this is exclusive to the Florist London website. Some of the other Florist London fragrances you can purchase at Neiman Marcus, maybe Saks, but Selfridges, other department stores. Mulberry Fig was exclusive. It was inspired by St. James's Park, which if you've ever been to London and you've visited St. James's Park, it's very close to the German Street Boutique. Keynotes include fig, cardamom, violet leaf, orris, vetiver, coconut, sandalwood, cedarwood, and amber. I also really like figs, so the fig, coconut, sandalwood, cedarwood, amber combination spoke to me. There's a warmth and a creaminess that is really nice, very sensual with this fragrance. I do think you could wear this every single day, but I think it would transition pretty seamlessly into evening as well. I could see getting dressed up and wearing this for an evening out. Definitely a night out, maybe on the beach somewhere or a fancy restaurant because it smells incredibly elevated. It's a little bit woody, but not too much. I think this is still a very feminine fragrance, although I believe this is categorized as unisex. My next pick for summer this year is Moon Glory from The Harmonist. This was my very first purchase from the brand. In fact, I was not at all familiar with them and I didn't even realize there was a counter nearby. I think I just happened to be walking around my local Neiman Marcus one day and I discovered this fragrance and it was wow. Not only was it love at first sniff, I think I sprayed it on my arm, walked around the store a little bit, you know, did a little browsing, had no intention to buy, but ended up purchasing before I even left the store that day because I just knew. Sometimes when you smell a fragrance, you have to kind of get to know it, date the fragrance for a little while, you know, spray it on your arm, try a sample for a couple of days. With this fragrance, I just knew. It spoke to me immediately. I knew this was the type of fragrance that I would enjoy wearing. Not just a fragrance that I really liked, there are plenty of those, but a fragrance that I would grab. Keynotes include Ylang Ylang, Hawaiian Jasmine, Lishi, Organic Honey, Queen of the Night Flower, Passion Flower, Peru Balsam, Musk, and Hinoki Wood. This is like a fruity floral. It's a little bit tropical. And it smells so heavenly. That honey note is so interesting. It adds a very unique quality, something that you don't really pick up on in a lot of fragrances. Yeah, you definitely get the honey and it has like a warmth. It's very smooth. It's very peaceful. It's a little sweet. It's a little powdery. It is so ultra feminine. This to me is like the ultimate date night fragrance for summer. Like I picture a beach vacation, going out in the evenings. This would be the type of fragrance that I would love to wear. It is so nice. I cannot believe more people don't talk about this fragrance and maybe they do and I'm just not aware. But when I went to read reviews, I saw so many people saying they loved this fragrance so much, but I don't really feel like it's out there. Like the word isn't out yet, which is probably a good thing. Moon Glory has princess perfume potential. Now that I'm smelling it again, I feel like I messed up and I should have included it with my princess perfumes because it's a little bit sweet, so feminine, and it just smells kind of like Moon Goddess. That would have been a better name. It is a little bit stronger though. This is more of a wow, like grrr, grab somebody's attention type of fragrance. Another one of my favorite tropical perfumes for summer is Cassiopeia by Tiziana Terenzi. I love this fragrance. It smells 
incredible. It is so nice. I think this is the type of fragrance that you can wear anytime, any place. It is a little bit more daytime, but I could also see myself wearing this evening. It is one of those fragrances that is so much fun to wear. I find myself grabbing this all the time. I wore this fr fragrance almost every single day last summer. And it was a new discovery for me at the time. I'm so happy I added this to my collection because it's heavenly. It's a little bit sweet and fruity, but like a tropical fruity, like a fruit salad. Or maybe a pina colada tropical smoothie. But then it has vanilla in the dry down, so it's nice and smooth, creamy, very feminine, very elegant as well. Key notes include passion fruit, lemon, cassis, fern, carnation, lily of the valley, rosa tea, sandalwood, tonka bean, vanilla, and musk. It's a little bit sweet and powdery, similar to Moon Glory, but it's not as potent. It's not quite as strong, but it's, I also wouldn't say this is like a light fragrance that is going to disappear either. This is kind of that perfect middle of the road where it's there, you're going to smell it, you're going to pick up on it on yourself, other people can smell you, but it's not so overbearing that you kind of have to be careful whenever you spritz it or be careful where you wear this fragrance. It's always appropriate. You're always going to smell amazing when you walk in the room. At the beginning of May, I put myself on a no buy for makeup and it's kind of trickled into my fragrance shopping as well. I've been on an unintentional low buy, but I think when I kind of get the itch again and I start to feel a bit spendy, I will most likely revisit the Luna collection from Tiziana Trenzi because Along with Cassiopeia, there are so many fragrances from this collection that are amazing. They're so expensive. I want to say this fragrance is around $330. So it's not like I'm going to go pick up all of them at once, but I do have a running list of fragrances, Draco included. There's a few others that I love from this line. And I think that will probably be my first stop once my low buy ends. Last thing, I didn't want to forget to mention that I think Cassiopeia would layer beautifully over the Beja Flor Sol de Janeiro cream, that new fragrance with the light pink jar. It smells amazing. I've heard a lot of people compare it to Baccarat Rouge 540 or Burberry Her. I don't know what it is in that fragrance that reminds people so much of Baccarat Rouge 540, but I get it. But anyways, even on its own, it smells amazing and I think it would layer really nicely with Cassiopeia. So if you love the Beja Fleur and you have Cassiopeia already, try them together. And really, I think that Beja Fleur cream would layer really nicely underneath all of these fragrances, any of them on the list because they're light floral summery. They just kind of work really nicely together. That's probably the best way to extend the life of your fragrance. If you love these fragrances and some of them are maybe a little bit too light or you just want to ensure that they're going to last all day long, make sure you hydrate your skin underneath but going in with one of the Sol de Janeiro creams would do it because they are so strong. Those the fragrance that they put in their body moisturizer is long lasting. Even without layering a fragrance on top, but you layer a fragrance on top, they kind of stick together like glue, and then it will certainly extend the life of your fragrance. I also think a good combination would be Roja 51. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know the chokehold this fragrance had on me last year. It is amazing. It's heaven, luxury, just smells like a sunset. This to me is like an edible sunset. It's a little bit sweet, creamy vanilla. It's very peaceful, tranquil. And I just feel like I am outside somewhere in nature watching the sun go down. It's described as the epitome of elegance, like a sparkling jewel box. It's rich, soft, fresh, sweet, fruity, and warm. Keynotes include lemon, bergamot, mandarin, gardenia, orange blossom, tuberose, raspberry, cinnamon, clove, patchouli, cashmere wood, sandalwood, vanilla, and orris. 51 was my favorite new fragrance launch of 2021. I had to actively stop myself from wearing it constantly because I loved it so much. And now I feel like I've spread myself around and I've been wearing everything but 51. I think it's so perfect for summertime, so now that we're getting into the warm weather, it truly feels like summer, I'm going to start wearing this again. It's so smooth, and it truly just smells elegant. Like, I feel like you have to be dressed up 
Even though you don't, I could see somebody wearing this more regularly, especially if you wanted this to be your signature scent. Like if you really fell head over heels in love with this fragrance like I have, you're gonna wanna wear it every day. You're not gonna wanna save it for special occasions. One of my favorite new launches of 2022 is Windflowers from Creed. If you love a classic floral fragrance, then you have to try this out. And I believe there are still samples available on the Twisted Lily website. If there are, I will link it down below because with all of these fragrances, if you can try a sample that is obviously the best way to go, they're very pricey, you wanna make sure you love it, you wanna wear it a bit first, but it is so nice. It just smells like a very free bouquet of flowers. It's a little bit spicy, a little bit warm. Reminds me a bit of maybe an elevated Chloe Nomad. And I'd, I'd have to compare notes. I'm not sure they're truly similar, but that's just kind of the feel that it gives. Oak moss maybe? I'd have to double check. There's something in it that gives it a little bit of like a cool spiciness. If you're familiar with Chloe Nomad, you might know what I'm talking about. Creed Windflowers has that same smell. And I just, I guess I pictured the ad for Chloe Nomad. I just imagine like the woman in the desert wearing suede fringe cowboy boots. Feels a bit like a road trip, Palm Springs, California. This is the fragrance that I took with me on my trip. Just an adventure, free spirited, wanderlust is what comes to mind. It was inspired by movement. Keynotes include jasmine, orange blossom, peach, jasmine sandback, rose, tuberose, iris, orange blossom, musk, sandalwood, and praline. It's a bit understated. I would wear this on a daily basis. I think this is a great every single day, signature scent worthy type of fragrance. Not because it's not special, but it doesn't say you have to be dressed up or this is an evening or just a date night perfume. I think this is more of a grab and go. One of my longtime favorites from Creed, this is an oldie, but a goldie is Love in White for Summer. It's right there in the name. This fragrance was meant for summer and it truly is the perfect light, fresh, spritz with abandon, get out the door type of perfume. But I, it's so nice that I also think this would be perfect for brides. This would be really nice for a beach wedding, maybe a more casual daytime wedding. Keynotes include Bulgarian rose, sweet magnolia, Virginian cedarwood, ambergris, sandalwood, apple, and jasmine. I've lost count now how many summers I've been wearing this fragrance, but it will never get old to me. It just smells so nice. I definitely pick up on the bergamot and the magnolia. I would say that's probably the floral note that sticks out the most to me. But I love that it has like the crisp juiciness of the apple, ambergris. It's such a pretty combination of notes. It feels very summery and it feels almost like you're on an island or a very elegant vacation somewhere without being tropical. It's not overly fruity. It's not really coconut or too vanilla. So it's different. Another great floral fragrance for summer, Latin Lover from Carner Barcelona. I love this fragrance so much. I included it in my latest collaboration set with Twisted Lily. So if you're interested in trying a sample, I will link the fragrance, but then I will also list the sample set down below. It just smells like one of the prettiest, most sophisticated floral fragrances you will ever smell. I think it is very underrated. It's just crazy to me that not a lot of people talk about this fragrance. I think not a lot of people know it exists, which is a good thing. It kind of works in its favor because, you know, you're going to smell different from everybody else if you wear Latin Lover. Keynotes include Magnolia, Ylang Ylang, Bergamot, Jasmine Sandback, Lily of the Valley, Violet, French Narcissus, White Musk, Benzoin, and Indonesian Patchouli Leaf. The name Latin Lover is very fun for a fragrance, but I do think it's not quite the best fit. When I think of a fragrance named Latin Lover, I think of something that is powerful, very sexy, warm, deep, moody, just all of the things. But this fragrance is actually very pretty. It's just a sweet white floral fragrance. It smells very elegant and dainty. 
would be another great princess perfume actually but just a very pretty classic floral i think if you love sweet perfumes if you like sweet florals this is so beautiful it would even be a really nice bridal fragrance it's that pretty i think that's what struck me most about this fragrance the first time i tried it was just how pretty it, it was because sometimes I think about floral fragrances and I think no that's too boring especially when you get into more niche fragrances you want something that's a little bit exotic or unexpected this fragrance is neither of those things and yet it still has star power it still has that star quality because it's just really good. It has been far too long since I've talked about Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9 New York and it's been a while since I've worn this fragrance. I remember when I first purchased it I was so in love. I said this was going to be my signature scent. It's all I wanted to wear and I did wear it exclusively for a long time because it's just so mouth-watering, addictive. You smell this fragrance and you don't want to come up for fresh air. All you want is a nostril full of Greenwich Village because it smells so nice. It's like an edible flower. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit gourmand, but so unique. And it's unlike anything else I have ever smelled. It's truly remarkable how they've created such an interesting fragrance that hasn't been duplicated or replicated. And people do love this fragrance. I mean, it has its own cult following, but it's still kind of a one and only. Oh, it smells so good. It is one of the longest lasting, best projection fragrances. And not only that, but it just smells so incredible. So it's kind of everything you want out of a power fragrance. And I would say this is a powerhouse fragrance. It's one of those head turners. This is a fragrance you wear when you want to make a statement. You're not trying to kind of fall to the background. You're not a wallflower. You really want to make a statement with your fragrance. Greenwich Village is the perfect fragrance for that. Keynotes include Cassis, Lychee, Mandarin, Peony, Water Lily, Jasmine Petals, Ambrox, Peach Musk, Vanilla, Oak Moss, and Praline. I spritzed this on probably around 10 o'clock before I left the house. And at six, seven o'clock at night, I could still really smell it. And it's not like I had to you know, put my arm really close to my nose and I could barely pick it up and it was super faint. No, I don't even have to try to smell myself and it just kind of wafts. Like I just get little like whips of myself if I turn and maybe fling my hair a little bit. This fragrance is just powerful. I don't know how they do it, but all of the Bond fragrances that I have actually are incredibly strong. So you you don't have to spritz as much. I go kind of crazy when I spritz my other fragrances just because I really want them to last. You do not have to do that with this fragrance. You can savor it, which is a good thing because it's expensive. And then last but certainly not least, I could not create a list of the best luxury niche fragrances for summer and not talk about Dama Bianca from Zerjoff. I think I talk about this fragrance a healthy amount, but I just really like it. I enjoy wearing it and I think it is truly one of those standouts. It is so incredible. It hasn't been duplicated. It is so juicy and fruity and flirty. It just makes my mouth water. I want to take a bite of this fragrance. I want to drink it in a tropical smoothie. It's so delicious. But then it is nice and creamy and has a nice vanilla dry down. So it kind of starts way up here where it's kind of buzzy, zesty. You have the kumquat and the citrus. It, it's so bright. And then it kind of calms down. It softens a bit. And then you have these beautiful floral notes, like just a gorgeous tropical bouquet, still a little bit fruity. And then throughout the life of the fragrance, it gets a little bit softer and then you're just left with the vanilla, musk, it's incredibly feminine. Tropical princess perfume. This is main character, attention grabbing, hot girl summer energy in a bottle. 
And that completes my list of the best luxury niche fragrances for summer 2022. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you heard about a fragrance that interests you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. If you have any recommendations, definitely drop them in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. You have impeccable taste. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be listed down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.